You'll probably remember I bought this uh, really, really cheap uh, meter from China. I think it was probably September last year. Um, just a bag of components, circuit board, uh, display and uh, plastic case. And uh, at long last I had time to, uh, to put it together yesterday so I thought we would just have a, a quick look. It, it couldn't be easy to build. Uh, all of the components are clearly marked on the circuit board. Um, and again the actual components themselves are all marked except the resistors so you'll need to be familiar with the the colour code uh, of the resistors if you're not just get a meter out and uh, make sure you uh, know which is uh, which is which and where to uh, to put them the it's an 80 mega 328 and it's uh, socketed uh, so you can just uh, pop the socket in first and uh, it gives you a couple of test points you can connect it up to the DC power supply or your battery and uh, there's some test points where you can check for various voltages before you actually insert the uh, the processor uh, so you can check that it's working correctly and you haven't made any mistakes after that unplug it insert the processor pop the display on and uh, you're good to go with the uh, very simple setup uh, procedure. So yeah, that's just a, oops, a close up of the board, the display. Uh, you, when you get this, you do have to solder the little header on there and the other one on here, and then you just line them up and uh, insert the display. Now. You probably won't be able to see under here, but there are various components that that um, very nearly touches. So you've just got to be careful that nothing's being shorted out uh, anywhere underneath there. In fact, you could perhaps put a uh, a small or a very thin sticky pad just on the top of the chip to uh, just dampen that. The problem I've found is the uh, the actual case. It doesn't come with this hole, that's something I've uh, put in there, but so it would come like that with three holes here, the cutout for the display and uh, uh, nothing else. So any other cutouts that you need uh, for the reset button, uh, for the contacts to the uh, device that you want to test, the DC socket uh, and the uh, display potentiometer you will need to cut out of the back cover if you're not going to use it uh, you know like that uh, something else just to point out if you are going to use it without the case you can solder on some surface mount devices for uh, test purposes if you find that you cannot make a good connection to them uh, it's as it comes they're expecting you to insert the device into these terminals here and do the screws up so for instance if we wanted to test this transistor they're asking you to pop it in there do the screws up and then press test it's hardly convenient um, what I've done is gone onto Amazon and bought a pack of two of these little test probes uh, they've got banana plugs at the end, but I'm just going to cut these down so they're a little bit shorter and uh, so I'll just use three of them obviously, I've got four there, it's a pack of two and I'll just connect them to here and then recalibrate uh, to allow for the lead length, you know the resistance and capacitance etc. Um, so as I was saying, yes the, the case is um, the weak spot here you can see that when you put that in the display is <coughs> excuse me touching the plastic now whoops sorry there we go uh, so that's where it needs to go but there's a pretty big gap <laughs> between the plastic pillar and the circuit board now it does come with these little plastic inserts but they're uh, they're not quite long enough and uh, the other problem is when you do use them 
the little reset button, it doesn't actually come through and clear the surface of the plastic box. So I'm not sure whether I'm missing something here. You certainly can't have the display any further in because it's actually uh, to, its max, you know, to its maximum depth on these headers. And there are other components that are <coughs> you know, just touching it if it does go in a bit further. So yeah, you're going to have to uh, faff around uh, with that. Not quite sure what I'm going to do. I suppose you could just cut this out a little bit bigger so the, the display actually poked through completely. And uh, yeah, that might be the way to go. It's probably going to look a bit of a mess, but uh, you know, I don't really care. I don't suppose I'll be using this on a day-to-day -day basis. Anyway, so once the display is uh, connected like that, you're ready to power it up. And if you just connect your 9 volt battery, it will do absolutely nothing. Uh, but you've got to press the, the reset button, well power and test is what they call it. And you'll probably find, like I did, it will power up and you'll just have a blank display. Uh, nothing will be there. And uh, if you read the instructions, you need to actually just tweak the potentiometer until the display appears. That's what I had, just the backlight. Just tweak it until you get the display. I'll bring this a bit closer. I've got a reading there because I had my fingers across the back of the uh, terminals. It will auto power off, but to calibrate it, you have to turn it on and then press the button again within two seconds and you simply have to short out the three terminals. I just made up a, uh, a small piece of wire, just inserted it into all three terminals and then tightened them up and it will read that. Uh, it will then want you to remove it so without touching any of the wires or the contacts just unscrew the terminals, pull the wire out you then go on to the next stage and you need to insert a fixed value non-polarized capacitor into terminals 1 and 3. Do that up and let it complete the calibration and then after that it's, uh, it's done. It's good to go. Uh, so we'll just pop a couple of uh, components in there. First thing it does is a um, battery check and if there's nothing connected hopefully you can see no or unknown or damaged part. So let's pop a oh, let's pop a cap in first. As I say, it's not very convenient to use the terminals, but if it was just for occasional use, then you know why not? But for an extra tenner, uh, you might as well just buy some probes. Right, so we're just going to fire this up. Let me bring it a bit closer. And uh, you can see there that it's telling you it's connected between pin, pins 1 and 3. The value is 948 mic. Uh, ESR is 0 0.06 and that loss is 1.1%. It is a 16 volt 1000 mic cap so uh, yeah, they're the sort of figures that you would expect from that. And uh, that will turn itself off in a few seconds. Uh, you can just unscrew that and move on to the next thing so we'll just pop a ceramic cap in there like I said this really isn't very convenient so get yourself some test clips All right actually I'm it's already done it but we're just gonna start it off again there you go, and it's telling you the connections between, uh, yeah, sorry, the uh, pins it's connected to and the uh, value of the cap. Now we'll just pop a diode in there. This time, perhaps, we'll try on uh, pins one and two. Just do those up. See it's powered off again to try and save the battery. So let's just get that on camera. 
and now it's showing you the diode symbol and uh, various other data and the which way round it's uh, orientated uh, if you've lost the markings off the diode um, you can see the band on this one but if you had lost the markings on it you can see which way round it is so that's that a couple of resistors here oh I'm doing the wrong one You can actually connect two resistors together. You can use uh, one to two and then two to three and it will work out the values. So here we go, that's the resistor. And uh, this is a, yep, 10K. So I think when I checked this on my Fluke, I got 9.99 and on this it's 10.02K. So I you know, think that's pretty, it's pretty accurate. And bearing in mind this cost, um, what, 10 or 12 pounds delivered from China. It's, uh, yeah, it's stupidly cheap. Let's just try this. What have we got here? Cool, this is an old uh, BU4508DX. I haven't used one of those for many years. Let's just pop that in there. And uh, let's see if it can tell us what it is. Right, so I'm trying not to hold that board. Here we go. So there we go. You can see back-to-back -back diodes, uh, various data, and I think if you press the test button again it will scroll to the next bit of data. Yeah, there's a 31.6 ohm uh, reading on 1 to 3. I think that's probably, yeah, that's back to testing again. So I've dropped the screwdriver, hold on. Obviously you can recalibrate this as and when you want. Literally is a two button press. I'm just gonna take the battery out. Yeah, so super impressed with that for the price. There are other features and uh, 